Yeah, you read that title right. And to answer your first question, he'd been dead about seven months. Ah, the Cadaver Synod. To set the scene, we're going back to Rome in 864, where a nearly 50-year-old Formosus was made Bishop of Porto Santa Rufina by Pope Nicholas I. And two years later, he was sent to act as the Pope's representative, known as a legate, to Bulgarian King Boris I. Formosus apparently did a really good job, seeing as in 867, Boris asked the Pope to allow Formosus to be the Archbishop over Bulgaria, but he was already Bishop of Porto Santo Rufina, and you couldn't be over two areas, nor could you be moved, so that was a no-go. The problem started in 875, when Charles the Bald became leader of the Carolingian Empire, which meant he became king over West Francia, Italy, and the Holy Roman Empire. There were some issues, which was pretty normal, and some people supported other candidates, and knowing this, Formosus left Rome in order to avoid the coronation and any possible issues that could arise. The Pope, by then John VIII, recalled all the bishops that had fled to come back to Rome, but Formosus declined, and viewing this as Formosus abandoning his post as bishop, he was excommunicated. Now, according to stories, and I want to highlight the word stories here, in 878, Formosus went before a synod, and the Pope begged for forgiveness and swore to leave Rome never to return and live as a layman for the rest of his life. Again, like I said, this was a story, and there's no evidence that it ever happened, but it's going to be important later. In 882, John VIII died, and Marinus I took over. One of the first things he did as Pope was to undo everything his predecessor had done to Formosus. And everything went back to normal for a while. In 891, Formosus was elected Pope. He wasn't Marinus's successor. There were actually two popes between them. Yeah, popes really did not last long back then. In fact, Formosus himself reigned for about five years, and he died in 896 at the age of 80. His successor, Boniface VI, lasted about 15 days before <clears throat> dying of gout. Yeah, we're pretty sure he was assassinated so that the next pope, Stephen VI, could take over. And in January of 897, not long after taking over, Stephen ordered that Formosus' body was to be exhumed, redressed in his papal vestments, propped up on a throne, and be put on trial. What were the charges? Well, they go back to that story I mentioned earlier and how he broke those vows by becoming pope. So, after several days of screaming at a corpse, he was found guilty and the vestments were torn off his body. The three fingers he'd used to bless people cut off. He was possibly beheaded, but we're not sure on that one. And Stephen declared that all of his actions were void. And, by the way, this included making Stephen himself a bishop. But, of course, you know, yeah, they, they, they ignored that. The body was then buried in a common grave, then dug up and thrown into the Tiber River. Now, this whole cornucopia of batshit insanity turned the public against Stephen, as did stories that the body of Formosus had been found and had been performing miracles. By August of that same year, Stephen had been imprisoned and strangled to death. His replacement, Romanus, lasted about three months before being deposed. He got to live, though. But his replacement, Theodore II, undid the Synod had Formosus' body recovered and reinterred in its original resting place, and after a 20-day reign as Pope, Theodore II died. Yeah, we don't know how. He was replaced with John IX, who upheld Theodore's rulings and added that from then on you couldn't put a corpse on trial. Sad that it took that long for that decision to be made. But in 904, Sergius III became Pope. Yeah, we're pretty sure he had the two previous ones murdered, and seeing as he was an active participant, at the Cadaver Synod, he went ahead and just ruled against the previous decisions and reinstated the Synod's decisions. But luckily, with pretty much everything else he did, this was ignored. So, I guess the moral of the story is don't put a corpse on trial? Music 